Good afternoon all and uh, welcome to the planning committee for August. And the first item on our agenda is any apologies for absence. Yeah, from Councillor Nicola Matthews, Chair. Nicola. OK, thank you. Item two then, are there any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interests? No. Thank you. Item three is uh, to approve and sign the minutes of the previous meeting as the correct record, starting on page one and page two. Page three. Page four. And page five. Oh, there's a true record, please. Thank you. Just to confirm, Chair, um, on page three, item four, uh, committee resolved to grant delegated powers to the head of planning and city regeneration if no uh, further consultations were received uh, during the consultation period. No, no comments were received, so the decision was issued in line with the recommendation. Thank you. We move on to item five, and that's the determination of planning applications under the Town and Country Planning Act of 1990. And the first item there is uh, item one is uh, in Clans Samlet. You find it on page eight, and that's over to you, Andrew. Yeah. Thank you, Jet. Um, Ian's got a presentation on this, which, uh, which he'll do. Um, just before I start, I would like to refer members to the update sheet. Um, you'll note that the local highway authority have provided comments in full. Um, they're still they're not objecting to the scheme, uh, but one additional condition is recommended following on from these comments. So you'll see the site location plan. Uh, the application is being reported to planning committee as it exceeds the alternate development threshold. Um, the application seeks permission for 35 new residential units, 17 of which would be dwellings. So there are eight two bed and nine three bed uh, and 18 new flats of which 14 would be one bed and four would be two bed. Um, and all units would be affordable. The site is a vacant parcel of land measuring approximately 0.75 hectares accessed off Samlet Road in Slam Samlet with the front half previously used for car sales and the rear and undeveloped land. Uh, the site is not allocated in the LDP, but is located within the urban boundary. If you could go to the next slide, please. Ian. Thank you. Uh, this is a Google aerial image of the site, which is outlined in red. So as I said, it's two distinct elements with car sales at the northern end and the undeveloped land at the rear. You'll note that there is an Aldi store located on the western side of the site. Uh, with commercial properties opposite uh, and the Enterprise Park is largely to the south with residential properties adjoining the site to the east. Um, so you can clearly see it's a mixed use area. If you can go to the next slide, please. Ian. Thank you. Uh, these are site photographs from Google. Uh, at the top uh, is a spliced image along the frontage of the site from Samlet Road with Aldi and its car park in the top right hand corner uh, and the trees at the rear of the site in the background. The top left hand corner again shows where the site uh, where the site adjoins for the residential properties on Samlet Road. In the bottom right hand corner, it's a view looking along Samlet Road facing west with the site located beyond the residential properties on the left hand side and the commercial units are opposite located on the right. The bottom left is a view looking east along Samlet Road with the site on the right hand side beyond the single tree you can see. If you can go to the site layout plan next, please. Thank you. So the overall layout provides for an access directly off Samlet Road with two times two storey blocks of flats on the eastern side facing onto Samlet Road and a three storey block located on the corner into the site uh, on the west of the access. Parking for the flats would be to the rear and each flat would have its own private amenity space, either through a balcony or a terrace. The access road would lead south into the site with a green verge on the western side and culminate in a turning head with dwellings in the southern half of the site. You'll note that there are two private drives off the turning head to provide parking for the dwellings. Um, between the dwellings and the flat, there's a local area of play proposed on the between the flats and the dwellings, which would also serve as an attenuation feature for uh, the surface water. And trees along the southern boundary would largely be retained and are, uh, and are at a higher level. If you can go to the next uh, slide, please. Ian. 
Thank you. These are the elevations. Um, so the top ones, uh, the first uh, slide is of the flats. So the top left is the front elevation of the two storey blocks of flats uh, and beneath it is the rear elevation. So this will be finished in buff brick and grey horizontal cladding with balconies on the rear. Each flat would have its own access and the side elevation is shown in the bottom left hand corner. On the right hand side is the three storey block of flats, which would be narrower than the two storey block, uh, block, but also incorporates balconies and uses the same materials. Um, so the side elevations are then shown at the bottom. If you can go into the next plan, please. Yeah. Thank you. And these are the elevations of the dwellings. Uh, again, they're designed in a similar manner to the flats in terms of materials and detailing, uh, with the top left hand side showing a front elevation, which is reflective of the majority on the dwellings on the site and the top right um, showing its rear elevation. The bottom elevations show uh, the dual aspect corner turning plot facing onto both the street and the public open space, uh, with the bottom left uh, facing the open space and the bottom right facing the roadway. Good articulation on both elevations to ensure natural surveillance. In terms of consultation, um, only one uh, neighbour objection has been received to date, and uh, that's with regards to the billboard being blocked on the side elevation of a property, but this has been given limited weight in the consideration of the application. There have been no um, objections from internal and external consultees on planning issues. So in terms of the principle, the site is within a mixed use area in the urban boundary and permission, permission has previously been granted for residential use, albeit this was not implemented and has now lapsed. The design is contemporary and will add interest to the street scene. The layout has incorporated private amenity space for the flats in the form of balconies, terraces, and there's also communal open space as well, which is welcomed. Uh, the strategic planning and placemaking officer supports the proposal. There's no issues in terms of residential amenity on neighbouring properties or internally. Uh, the relationship within the site is considered acceptable. The local highway authority has no objections to the proposed road layout, but have requested a contribution towards active travel improvements and a connection to an active travel route on the southern side of the site, uh, which is considered reasonable uh, and would be secured by section 106 and conditions. There's no objections from pollution control or the coal authority subject to further investigations and no significant noise issues. There's no objections from the ecologist, Natural Resources Wales, the tree officer, Glamorgan Gwent Archaeological Trust or Dual of Cymru Welsh Water, subject to conditions. The concerns of the drainage officer would be a separate issue that would be resolved via the SAB process. Uh, and whilst colleagues in education have requested a contribution for English medium secondary places, the development would only generate three pupil spaces and there are 47 unfilled spaces in the school with a further commitment of six. So therefore, it's not considered to be reasonable or justified. Whilst the proposal is for 100% affordable housing, only 10% would be secured via the Section 106 agreement to ensure policy compliance. So overall, the proposal is considered acceptable on balance and the officer recommendation is for approval, subject conditions and a Section 106 agreement with regards to the 10% affordable housing provision and the active travel contribution. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, first off, Councillor Mike White. Yes, in regards to the Samloff Road, obviously been a very, very busy road and the uh, the uh, £15,000 request for one of six of highways. Um, can I just ask, yeah, because of it being a, a very, very, very busy road, is there a possibility that the the pavement that's going on Samloff Road that will go into the site, can that be done in tactile so it would assist disabled people to know that they are, you know, there's, there's a crossover there. Um, would, would that perhaps be possible that, that that could be included to comply with policy T1? Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Downing. Yeah, it, it, it's funny that um, that Mike has mentioned a very busy road <laughs> is what I was going to uh, mention, but then I was going to bring up and surprise that the highways didn't put in something like a crossing coming out here because there's 35 units uh, in this area and they are affordable so that there would be like families with children. Um, the bus coming down the road is OK because it's on this side, but if you want to catch a bus the other side of the road, you've got to cross this road. Mm. So I just wondered if uh, anybody from highways have uh, looked into this this part of it. I know 
We like those other questions. Sorry, I missed that up very late. Councillor Black and then Councillor Rich. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, it just seems to me that 10% affordable housing is quite low. I'm just wondering if, if that the reasons behind that is normally we have 20%, don't we? Depends what came in. Well, it does, but let's see what the officer said. If I'm not mistaken, this site is was always commercial. And if I remember, there was a nightclub there. Hmm? Yeah, I remember. I remember it well. Uh, my friend was there who had a caravan site once down in, down in Oxford. So I wish I had had some heavy days in Oxford. Yes, I remember. remember it well. Yeah, Andrew, sorry, a few points there. Yeah, sorry, thank you, Chair. I'll, um, I'll leave the high risk issues to, to Matt to pick up if that's uh, OK. Um, but obviously the access into the site would be subject to a section 278 agreement and crossing points are shown across the access road along um, Samlet Road. In terms of the affordable housing provision, um, we've got different targets depending on which area um, the site is located within. So in, in, in different parts of Swansea, uh, according to the viability evidence as part of the LDP, can provide for different percentages of, of affordable housing. So in this area, the target percentage is 10%. Whilst the scheme would be 100%, um, to ensure policy compliance, all we could do was seek to achieve 10%. So that's why the 10% is included. Uh, and then I'll just hand over to Matt now to pick up any residual highway issues. Thank you, Jet. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yes, a couple of points there. Uh, Councillor White, uh, yeah, the access would be subject to a 278 agreement and technical approval by the Highway Authority, um, and it would have to comply with all current legislation and guidance, including things like tax our crossing points. Uh, Councillor Downing was talking about crossing Samlet Road. Uh, there is a signal crossing about 80 metres up the road at the signal junction. Um, that's again, that's to the latest standard. It's got tactiles, push buttons, and red and green men. So it's uh, it's. Sorry. There we are. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So there is a there is a nearby crossing, so people will be able to get across Sandlot Road to the bus stops on the other side. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Good. Well, the member wish to speak. Um, no. Yes. Right, uh, we've got, as I said, got no other hands up. Nobody wished to speak. So you can see the um, recommendation there on um, page 38 and 39 is one of approval. So we will now take a vote on that. Yeah, Councillor Matthew Bailey. For. Peter Black. For. Bill Downing. For. Alan Jeffrey. Can you members please put the. No. Thank you. Councillor Mary Jones. Four. Councillor Sarah Keaton. Four. Mike Lewis. Four. Richard Lewis. Four. You say it again. Four. Thank you. Nicola Matthews, not promised. Mike White. Four. Andrew Williams. Four. And Paul Lloyd. Yeah, four. That's 11, four, none against you. Are you unanimous? It's carried. Thank you very much. And then we move on to the um, other item on item six. You find that on uh, page 47 is the Commons registration uh, in Langevelic Ward. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members. Yeah, this report concerns the application for the removal of land from the register of common land and the registration of exchange land in respect of register unit CL49 at Langevelic Common. An application has been received from the Welsh Government to amend the Register of Common Land by removing land from Plangavela Common, which was compulsory purchased in 1969 for highway construction uh, and also for the registration of other land that was provided in exchange to the compulsory purchased land. 
So an application was, was received under Section 13 of the Commons Registration Act 1965 on the 8th of December 2017 to amend the register. The application seeks to amend the register by giving effect to the changes brought about by virtue of the Welsh Office, Highways Compulsory Purchase Order No. 9, London to Fishguard Trunk Road, Morriston Bypass Order 1969, which was confirmed on the 20th of June 1969. Now, the, the procedure for this application is set out in the Commons Registration Regulations of 1966, which came into operation in 1967. Uh, and but we have accepted a form uh, 29 as the application form, even though that form didn't actually come into use until uh, 2nd of January 1970, because the 1966 regulations did not provide a specific form for dealing with, with these type of applications. So uh, the councillor considers that form 29, which we accepted, uh, is acceptable because it contains all the necessary information that we've had to process the application. So the substituted land is the land provided in exchange for the common land taken by virtue of the order and it's shown edge green on the application plan in the report and described as a parcel of land east of the brook called Nantagos, north of the M4 and west of Flangavellach Tunnel in the locality of Flangavellach. And then the taken land under the CPO is land part of the Flang of Air Common acquired for the construction of a trunk road, and that's shown edge red on the plan, uh, and known as part of Flang of Air Common and a half bed of Nanta Gorse. But, but it could be better described really as part of the M4 corridor at the junction 47 uh, of the M4. So when the Commons Registration Authority uh, receive these applications, uh, they have to consider whether the um, virtue of the which enactment, whether that land is ceased to be common uh, and whether certain other land not registered common can become common in substitution for that land. So these the statutory background there is the section 147 and 148 of the Enclosure Act 1845 or paragraph 11 of the Acquisition of Land Authorization Procedure 1946. So the Commons Registration Authority must allow a period of 40 days from the date of publication of the notice for any persons to make written objections or representations in respect of the application. So the taken land has obviously now been built on and forms part of the M4. So that land has ceased to be common land and the other land substituted has become uh, common land as required by the regulations. So the legal tests have been met and the application can then progress to the consultation phase. So the council published a, a notice on the 10th of October 2018, which set out these amendments to the register uh, and stating that the application should be successful would, that would be the recommendation. So the notice described the taken land and the substituted land clearly and indicated that any objections should be received by the 16th of November 2018. And the notice was also sent uh, to the local members for the Flang of Eric Ward, to the Community Council, to the Open Spaces Society, to Natural Resources Wales, the Commons Association and anyone else with an interest in the common. Uh, and no objections or representations were received at all. So therefore, the recommendation in the report is that this application be accepted and the register of common land be amended so that the land identified as the substituted land is included in register unit CL49 and then the taken land is, is removed from the Commons Register. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Any, any questions now? Right. Thank you. Councillor Black first, then, yeah. 47 years? Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a reason why it's taken the Welsh Government for, well, obviously the Welsh Government didn't exist 47 years mm. ago. Why it's taken 47 years to apply for the, the this, this swap? Yeah. Do we know? <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm afraid, Councillor. Um, we only, we can't, we can't, even though we're aware that this, 
situation needed rectifying until an application is received. The council can't do anything. So we had the application in 2018, so it has still taken us a couple of years to, to process through years. But until until then, we we can't do anything. Thank you. Just to double in. Yeah, uh, I'm not having colours on the map. Um, and I suppose there's so many people um, have seen this and made comments. So I'm just going to ask the comment because this land wasn't common land and is now going to be common land. It's not in the LDP, is it? Uh, I, no, I don't think so. It's, well, it's, 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 this is common. The Commons uh, process is, is separate to the LDP uh, process. The Register of Common Land is a separate uh, document. And a specific allocation in the council? Yeah, because it was put on that. I don't know the end for this is because once it is in North, once North, North. it's north of the M4, yeah. 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 Not necessarily. But in the It's not Portlander Village. In the yeah. But interesting. Yeah. 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 Strategic site is the other side. Strategic site is the other side of the M4. Yeah. Thank yeah. Thank you. Just to see what happens then. Thank you. I've got no other hands up to speak then. Um, well, thank you very much, Jonathan. You see the uh, recommendation there is on, on page 47 is that the application is accepted and the register of common land be amended as follows to the two points below. So take a vote on that now. Yeah, Councillor Matthew Bailey. For. Councillor Peter Black. For. Bill Downing. For. Alan Jeffrey. For. Mary Jones. For. Sarah Keaton. For. Mike Lewis. Or Richard Lewis. Or Mike Wright. Or Andrew Williams. And Paul Lloyd. Okay, Paul. That's unanimous again, That's Chairman. Again. 11 4. Thank you all very much. Our next meeting there is on Tuesday, the 6th of September. Oh, the thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank